Hey Rangers! Happy Friday! Today we're going to go ahead and learn about elephants, not elephants, animals that start with E. Like elephants! But y'all know about elephants. You've heard about elephants. So let's go ahead and learn about some animals that start with E that you probably haven't heard of. After that, we're going to go ahead and have a review of all of the animals that we learned about on safari this week. And then I'm going to post a little quiz. You got all weekend to do it. And we'll go ahead and talk about the answers on Monday. So let's hop in, let's head out, and let's go on safari. So we're going to start today off by learning about the E-Land. Can you say E-Land? Yeah. So the E-Land is the world's largest antelope. Well, it's actually the world's first and second largest antelope because there's two kinds of E-Lands. The giant E-Land is the world's largest antelope and the common E-Land is the second largest antelope. And do you remember what the third largest antelope is that we learned about on Tuesday? That's right, the bongo. Similar to the bongo, the E-Land lives in all sorts of habitats across East and South Africa. So they live in the woods and on the savanna and in mountainous regions. Um, both male and female E-Lands have long, majestic, spiraling horns. Uh, but the males, uh, both their horns and their whole bodies, are going to be bigger than the females. Um, they can both weigh up to a thousand pounds. Whoa. Uh, they live in all sorts of habitats and they can travel in herds from like 60 elands all the way up to hundreds of elands traveling together. Can you imagine that? Hundreds of the world's largest antelope. Whoa. That's a lot of mass. Uh, so they're browsers and grazers. Uh, so that means they're herbivores, but the difference between a, grow a browser and a grazer is a grazer eats grass like a cow or a sheep. And a browser eats fruits and shrubbery and berries and stuff on trees and, uh, and bushes. Um, they browse like deer and dick dicks. So elands do both. So they have a pretty... Uh, abundant diet. Uh, they're not the fastest animal, but their size certainly protects them from a lot of predators, and they sure can jump high. They have no problem clearing a seven-foot fence or jumping over each other. That'd be a sight to see. So the western giant eland is highly endangered, and it's possible that the only way this animal might survive is through captive breeding programs, which aren't ideal, but if it's the only way to save a species, what we got to do. So that's the E-Land for you. So you've now learned about the world's first, second, and third largest antelopes. Cool. All right. So that's all I have for you about the E-Land. Go ahead, Google what the E-Land looks like. Again, it's sort of like a giant tan ox looking thing with big old horns. Cool. Next animal we're going to talk about is one of my favorites, little echidnas. Can you guess where echidnas live? I'll give you a hint. It's the same place with kangaroos and koalas. That's right. Echidnas live in Australia and New Guinea. There are several different kinds, including the long-nosed echidna and the short-nosed echidna. The short-nosed echidna is common in Australia, mostly in like arid regions, but also anywhere that they can find, or, or like shrubland areas, uh, but they like to hole up in caves and hollow logs. Um, they're solitary little things. Fun fact, baby echidnas are called puggles. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So an echidna is called a monotreme, and a monotreme is a type of egg-laying mammal. What? Yeah, platypus are also in that category. So that means it's a mammal. It has warm blood and it, you know, breathes air and all that stuff. But it lays eggs instead of giving birth to live young. So after a three-week gestation period, the female echidna lays an egg, I believe about one egg, in a nice little safe burrow. And then she, like, sits on it and incubates it sort of like a bird for 10 days. 
And then the baby puggle breaks out of the shell using tiny little, they're, tall, they're called egg teeth, so it helps them like crack out of the shell. And then they hang out with their, with their mom and they're nursed in their burrow until it's covered in spines and can uh, protect itself and go out on its own into the outback. Uh, echidnas are surprisingly long-lived. They can live up to 50 years. Whoa. And I thought they were the same size as a hedgehog because even though they look sort of similar to a hedgehog, they're not related at all. Um, and hedgehogs are like yay big, but echidnas are apparently like yay big. They can get like a foot to 15 inches long. I did not expect that spiky bowling ball to be that big. That's for sure. Um, so let's go ahead. Oh, they are not, uh, again, related to the hedgehog. They are insectivores. They have a long, sticky tongue that's good for eating ants and termites. Um, they burrow in small caves and dead hollow trees. They have such good defense mechanisms, a.k.a. burrowing and spikes, um, that they, uh, they don't have to worry too much about predators, although the occasional brave dingo or fox will certainly have a go at an echidna. And, of course, people. Uh, roadkill echidna is just a sad thing to think about. Um, so, yeah, that's echidnas. They're pretty cool. Again, I highly recommend that you Google them. Check out what they look like. See if you can find some fun videos of echidnas being echidnas. Maybe you can see a puggle. And go ahead and draw an echidna. That's always a fun one to do. So, Eland, echidna. And I was going to talk about another Australian animal, um, but I feel like you've heard about the emu, you know, the world's second largest flightless bird besides the uh, after the ostrich. Um, I feel like you know about the emu, so we're not going to talk about that too much, but let me tell you, I befriended a wonderful emu one time. His name was Einstein because he had like this crazy hair, and he was real, he had a lot of personality. He really enjoyed like scratches right under his wings, and he liked um, to be intellectually engaged, so I constantly had to be making him like toys and puzzles for him to figure out, and they're very smart and uh, like to be like to be played with, not all of them. Never approach a wild emu that will go poorly. But, um, you know, once you get to know one, you find they have quite the personality. So we're not going to talk about emus because I'm pretty sure you've heard of them. So instead, we're going to talk about another bird that you've never heard of because I've never heard of it. It's an eider. An eider. Can you say eider? It's a type of sea duck. And there's several different types of eiders, including the king eider, the spectacled eider, and the common eider. And they all live in the cold, frigid waters of the Arctic in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They nest in the colder areas, but then they winter a little further south in, like, New England, uh, south of France, the fancy, and the Netherlands, too. Um... They have very thick down feathers called eider down, and this was traditionally used to stuff jackets and pillows and quilts and sleeping bags and anything else that you wanted to stay safe and warm because the eider down is really thick and really warm. Uh, and what the females do is when they go to nest, they create their nest by plucking feathers out of their chest and lining the nest with huh, whew, nice feathers for their little chick. Now, fun fact about uh, nesting eiders is that oftentimes females will return to the same island that they themselves were hatched on. That's fascinating. And colonies of nesting eiders can reach up to 10,000 to 15,000 birds. That's a lot of bird poop on that island. Um, but back to the eider down, uh, it was traditionally used to stuff a lot of the stuff that keeps us warm, but we have slowly moved on to using either domesticated goose down or synthetic materials. However, eider down can still be sustainably harvested, and they do this by waiting for the nesting season to be done, and then people go to the nest to, to the nests, and they're able to collect the eider down left over from the nest without causing any harm to the bird or chick. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, 
That is, uh, occasionally female eiders will band together to share the responsibilities and challenges and trials and tribulations of raising ducklings. I bet we could all use a co-op of eiders right now, eh? <laughs> anyway, this bird is near threatened, so as always, it's important to learn about these species, learn how we can protect them, learn how we can educate others about how incredible this planet is. So again, let's recap our three animals of the day. They are the eland, the world's largest antelope, the echidna, uh, an egg-laying mammal, and the eider sea duck. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give you five questions. Don't worry, I will also post them above. And you have all weekend to do some research and to go over your notes in your field guide and answer these five questions. And on Monday, we'll be going over the letter F, but we're also going to be going over the questions to, or the answers to this quiz. So question number one. What two animals that we learned about are related to each other? Hmm? Number two. How many birds did we learn about this week? Huh? Can you list what they are? Name two animals that can hold their breath for a long time. Name two animals that are both terrestrial and arboreal. And Question number five, how many antelopes did we learn about this week? It seemed like most of the animals we learned about lived in Africa, am I right? So how many antelopes did we learn about this week and what are they? So again, I'll go ahead and list those questions above so you can spend the weekend doing your own safari. And I highly encourage uh, you to get outside, explore your own local community, enjoy the sunshine, spring is springing up. So get outside. Stay wild, Rangers. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you Monday. Cheers.